Hello and welcome. In this tutorial we're going to build a multiple choice quiz from scratch using Python. And the code is fairly simple and I believe that any beginner should be able to understand it and follow it. But you should know that this is not the best way to create a quiz. This is just a great exercise to practice the basic syntax and to understand the logic behind it. So how do we start? Well, I think that it's a good idea to have just a simple welcome statement at the beginning. So welcome to the quiz. Then we would like to print, for example, maybe some rules or guidance regarding the, the, the quiz. And this is something that we can do later on. And then we would like to start printing the question, which in this case, our first question would be um, which of these cities is in England? Then we would like to print the potential answers that the user can choose of. So A, London, B, Amsterdam, C, Barcelona, and D, Washington City. If I run this script, the output would be, of course, four lines, and it doesn't look great. So first of all, every line is one after the other. We can change that. But the second part is, which is probably even worse, is that all the potential answers are in one line. So how do we adjust that? Well, we can have print A as a separate um, print statement and print B as a separate one. So then we would have four lines of code. But what we can do is within this line, we can have a new, so to say, a new line which means what Python does is in, in this case is it starts printing out, so A, London, and then when it comes to this part, it actually reads that it should go to the next line and then continues printing. So I'm going to run this script and you will see the difference. And as you can see, it looks much better compared to the previous output. So we have the question, we have the potential answers that the user can choose of. We need the user's input, which we're going to store in a variable answer and again that would be the input from the user. In in the previous two times when we run the script you will notice that it ends with these three arrows and that means that the, the Python script has has stopped, has finished uh, running all the code. But if I do it now you will notice that those three arrows will not appear and the reason for that is well Python did run this part but it is still waiting for our input. So if I have A, for example, which would in this case be the correct code, then you will see that now the, the script has stopped. So it has went it, it, it went through all the lines and that's it. So we have our, if I print A, if I print the answer, we would get A. So our answer is stored correctly. Now the next part is we need to check if the answer provided from the user is equal to, in this case, A. Because A is our correct answer. And if that's the case, we would like to print you guessed correct. Else, if that's not the case, we would like to print sorry, that was not the correct answer. Now, there are a few things that we need to adjust and there are a few things that might go wrong at the moment. Where do we start? Well, what if the user um, answers London instead of A. Well, it would lead to an incorrect answer according to the current script that we have. Sorry, that was not, and I don't think this is fair. We can adjust that by having if answer is equal to A or the answer is equal equal to London. So now London is also an answer that will be accepted and will lead to this statement. But what if the user enters London with lowercase letters? Well, that would lead to an incorrect answer. Why? Well, because the string London with lowercase is not equal to a string London with uppercase L. As you can see, if we check whether these two are identical, we would get a false as a, as a return. So, well, one way we can solve this is our input we can make it all lowercase. But before that, 
we can actually combine these two lines together. So we can take the potential answers and have them as part of this input. And I'm going to remove this print. So how this works is the variable answer would be equal to the input of the, this question, or in this case, of the potential answers. And it would be exactly the same as what we did before. This would be printed to the user, and the input would be stored in the variable. But now what we are going to do is we're going to have our input dot lower. What this does is it, it takes the input and it converts it to lowercase letters. But then we need to compare it with London on lowercase as well, because otherwise we will never get the correct answer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this script and I will have London with all capitals. And it will lead to correct answer. Why? Well, our answer is all caps, but then we have the dot lower method with convert, which converts it to all lowercase letters. And then it's, it is in a way checked whether it matches our correct answer. And since that's the case, we get, you get correctly. Now what I'm going to do is I would like to have uh, one more question. And also I would like to keep track of the score. So I'm going to first copy um, all of the code from regarding the question. And I will have the question, um, which of the following is a float? And the answer A would be, let's say 14. The B would be 14.3. Then I will have, I don't know, let's say a string or float. Those are just potential answers. Now, our correct answer, a float is a number that has a decimal. So in this case, B would be the correct answer. And um, I'm going to adjust the if statement accordingly. So if the answer is B or if the answer is 14.3, then we would say, yeah, you've guessed correctly. But this is something that we can have as part of our rules. So we might say, um, enter answer a, B, C, D, or, or maybe choose A, B, C, D, or the answer, but not both. Y you can think of a better way to print this out. All right, so if I run the code now, and I have London and, I don't know, and B, we have guessed both correctly, but we have no clue at the moment we have two questions, but if we have 30, then we're not sure how many we got right or wrong. So to solve that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a counter. So count equals zero. And I'm going to have another variable called questions attempted. And that will also start from zero. So once the user reaches the point where the user sees the answers, I would like to increase the questions attempted plus equals one by one. And I will do this by the second question as well. Now, whether the score, um, I'm going to have this as score, maybe that's better. Whether the score has increased, well, that depends on the input of the user. So if the answer is correct, in that case, I would like to increase the score by one. And it would be the same for the second question as well. Now, at the end, once the quiz is over, I would like to print quiz is over, your score is plus string of score, plus maybe this, plus string of um, questions attempted, and then plus a dot. So let's see what would be the output of this. So I'm going to have, I don't know, let's say London, so the first one I got correct, and the second one I will have incorrect. So we get the correct output regarding whether the question was correct or not. And then at the end, we get the statement, quiz is over, your score is one out of two. You can have this as percentage that you can play with it as well. But again, we have one big chunk of code. And uh, what we can do is we can have a simple print statement, an empty line, which would um, separate the welcome part from the question and the 
check them from the first question. So as you can see, now we have some space, and then between the second, the first and second question as well, uh, we can have empty space between here and the, I don't know, the, the ending print statement. That's also fine. But there's one more thing that we can do, and that's in, to import time. So this module allows us to pause the script for some time. What I'm going to do is I will use the time.sleep and I will make the script wait for two seconds before moving to the rest of the code. Now, why is this good? Well, before that we got all the output at once and now what will happen is we'll have one line and then another one and then the question and then so on. So it looks a bit better compared to having all the code at once, but this part at the moment is quite messy. So let's have the import time, then we might have this as a separate part of the code and so on. And this is the variables. Now this we might have, um, for example, as the one first question, this one we might have as the second question. Very useful is to have comments. The comments start with hashtags. So here we might have question one, question two, and it, it's something that you might use later on if you want to, to refer to the code, you might to make, you want to make any change. But there is one more thing that I want to cover in this tutorial, and that's we have a code that's repeating. And that's, that's these two lines. And uh, if we have a code that's repeating, we can create a function. So I'm going to create a function, define a function called correct answer. And in that function, well, it will be these two lines of code that's repeating. So instead of having these two lines of code by every question, I will have correct underscore answer. So I'm going to run this function instead of having the two lines of code. And it may, if I have 10, 15 questions, it makes it much easier than to actually manually modify these two lines by every question. But what else we need to adjust before running the code is that in this function, code, the, the, the variable score doesn't exist. And yet we're trying to increase it by one. It does exist, but not in the function. So this here is a global, it's so-called global variable. And it, it exists on global scale in terms of in the file, but not in the function. So how do we make a connection between the two? Well, we have to, specify global score. And now when we actually add one more to the score, well, it checks, do we have score? Yes, it's the global one, so this one. So I'm going to run this script just to make sure that it runs fine. So welcome to the quiz. Choose A, B, C, D or the answer, but not both. Um, a and then B. You guessed correctly, quiz is over, your score is 2 out of 2. You can play with a lot of things in this script, but it is very good and I think it covers a lot of the Python syntax for beginners. If something didn't work for you in, or you got some error or you have some question or comment, leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.